what we're looking at here, this these are old nests in this box. Now this box is actually designed as a woodpecker box. It's not designed as a bluebird box, but the opening is inch and a quarter. Now you can see it's been chewed by a uh, probably a chipmunk or a squirrel, uh, so the opening is a little bit bigger. But the inch and a quarter opening here. This this ha actually has two nests in this box. We see this bottom nest is a completely different material. It's much neater in its design. It's much more compact in its design. It's a lot of moss, a lot of actual um, items collected, things like cotton. You, we see some cotton in here. Um, might even see some pieces of string in here uh, and even some feathers from the bird itself. Now, on top of that nest, we actually see another nest. And it's difficult to see here. And I'm gonna use a stick to lift it up because we we're actually cleaning this box. It's okay to clean the box out. This nest on top is very messy. This is made with a lot of coarse pine needles and things like that. It's actually a wren nest. And to show you guys, down inside here, we see some old wren eggs. So we see uh, this was made with some oak pollen in there. But we see the brown eggs are the wren eggs. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the bluebird egg is actually uh, a, a blue, bluish color, looks like a very miniature robin egg. So we know these happen to be wren eggs. All right, here we go. We are clearing this out. And we, the reason we clear this out, um, as you can see, we see the, uh, in this debris, we have some ants, we have some, some bugs, and that's not good, especially for a newborn uh, baby bird that doesn't have feathers, doesn't have the ability to defend itself. Um, so we don't want these bugs in there uh, for the new babies. So we're gonna clear out this uh, nesting cavity and I'm gonna dig down in here a little bit more. We're gonna clear all this out. This is also one of the reasons, now like I said, this is actually not designed for bluebirds. Uh, this is designed for woodpeckers. But if you come around here to the side, you actually see this is the reason that we put the drain in the bottom. Uh, it's to allow air to come in and out circulation through the box but also because it is actually supposed to discourage insects from building up in the bottom of this box now this is actually we should have cleared this box out uh, last season we have not cleared it out since last season so you can see if you don't clear out your boxes how quickly the insects are going to come in so we got to go ahead and get this box ready for this season and we'll I'm pretty sure We'll get some bluebirds in this thing in the next couple of weeks. All right, this is a more traditional bluebird house style. This was actually designed for the bluebird. And a little history here. The reason that uh, there was a need for bluebird houses, it actually came about when we transitioned fence posts. Now, we used to be an uh, agricultural community, a lot of fence posts, and we transitioned from using traditional trees and uh, rough cut lumber to using pressure treated lumber. When we started using pressure treated lumber, over time there were no cavities in the fence posts. Bluebirds used to nest in the fence posts and all of a sudden we have all these fences that no longer have cavities for nesting. And so actually there was a decline in the bluebird population of direct link to the use of pressure treated wood in fence posts and some smart people figured that out and began to design a bluebird house. This is a typical uh, bluebird house again with the inch and a quarter hole. The hole is located approximately five feet uh, from the ground and it is located near a tree that can be perched on by the bluebird. That's very important that it faces an open space and has a perch. They do not like to necessarily perch on top of their box. They will do that but they do not prefer that. They like to perch and uh, uh, just a short distance away. This particular box is old. It is in need of repair. You see it can actually leak water up here. The roof has started to rot out slightly. Um, but a couple things. This box has a hinge, a pivot right here. So uh, I've tapped on this box a couple of times. I know there's no, no birds inside it. Now truthfully, a bird could be laying an egg inside this and we wouldn't know it. It would not fly out if it was in process. Um, another thing that you need to be concerned about is wasps or, or um, stinging insects, so just be aware of that. As you approach a box, always keep an eye on it, look at, look at it to make sure nothing's flying in and out. This box, uh, the front extends past the bottom, that's for rain runoff. It also has a vent in here, we don't want it to get too hot. Uh, it's kind of like, you, you, you know, uh, your car gets a certain temperature in the summertime, 
We want to make sure the windows are down so we have this vent here. Also, the bottom actually has the corners cut off of it. Um, you can't really see. We'll open this up here and I'll show you. Uh, the bottom has the corners cut off of it for drainage. Now, this, this, this box is in very, very poor uh, repair here. So, actually, I need to adjust this slightly. That's the way the bottom, the base of this should be. And we see we, actually, we have the corners cut off uh, for drainage. And so there's nothing, nothing in here as of yet. So we will keep you updated. All right, we were checking our Bluebird houses uh, a few days ago. In this particular house, I have decided to retire. Um, I was hoping there would be some salvageable pieces on it, but a lot of rotten wood. You notice the top here. Um, so this is good for teaching. This is good as maybe a template for making other birdhouses. Uh, but I've decided to replace this birdhouse with this birdhouse. So it's the same design. I want to share a few things about the design. All right, and I will post some follow-up content for those of you if you want to try to make one of these. Um, watch through the whole end of the video and I'll do some detail on how to make one of these bird houses. This is specifically designed for the Eastern Bluebird. Um, so you see I've labeled all the dimensions. We basically have about a nine inch top, about a 16 inch board uh, for the back. Notice we've got the side is on an angle, 10 inches here, nine inches here. Uh, that's a 12.5 degree angle for those of you that know how to create that with your various tools and speed squares and so forth. Um, but the easiest way is just to do 10 inches and 9 inches. Um, and then a couple things that you'll notice. Uh, we have an air gap in here. This is important. Uh, I reviewed this the other day, but just like you don't leave a pet in a car because the car gets too hot, you don't leave a bird in a bird box with it closed up. We want to have good ventilation. Our bottom, we have uh, recessed in, into the bottom. Uh, we have a five and a half by four inch that works with this one by six that we're utilizing. All right, now uh, I've created a pivot point here by putting a screw into each side. By the way, I use two inch screws on this. I've used inch and quarter screws in the past. And as you can see, inch and a quarter screws over time pull out. So in this particular box, I decided to go, rather than use inch and quarter, I went with uh, two inch galvanized uh, screws. I put a lock on here, so we'll do the, we'll do the lock. And here's my, here's my pivot point. Now, I've recessed the bottom so that it gives my finger something to grip onto. That is something, I neglected to do that on this box. Uh, the bottom is essentially flush and it makes it very difficult to open. So I made sure that I uh, recessed the bottom, give my finger something to grip to, I'm able to open it up. Also wanted to make sure I don't do a lot of sanding on these boxes, but right here, because people will be putting the fingers, I made sure that I sanded this real good. All right, so this is the inside of our box, and you'll notice a couple things about the inside of the box. The inside of the box, I've created these notches. Uh, they're about a half inch apart. Now, truthfully, they were supposed to be perfectly a half inch apart. I did mess up on one of them. But what this is, if you can picture a very, very small bird. A bird has just been born, been alive for only a few weeks, and it goes to look out of the box. Now, if it was living in the cavity of a tree, the natural uh, environment has lots of imperfections. So it would be able to put its little claws in there and climb up. However, uh, our wood doesn't have imperfections. It's very smooth. It's difficult. So we create a ladder. It essentially gives the bird an opportunity to climb up and look out the hole. Also, uh, note the cutaway of the corners here. That is for drainage. So if water were to get inside the box, we have the drainage in the bottom. Uh, extended the front past the bottom kind of like the drip edge on your house. It gives it the water the ability to run off. I cut these 45 just because I think it looks cool. Um, another detail that I added 
if you are like an artistic kind of person or you know somebody that maybe does vinyl siding or has a, a box break or does things with trim coil or sheet metal maybe a HVAC guy or whatever um, I added this little piece of metal in here so I cut a ridge in here with a flush cut saw uh, I used the dovetail saw to cut that slot in there truthfully you can use any kind of a, a blade or saw to cut something in there and basically look at it from the side it's just a little little Z piece of metal um, but what that does it kind of acts like flashing like on your roof so when it rains the water will come down here and it will run and it will run off um, you know so I'll more details on on how I actually cut these pieces and constructed it um, but now we're gonna just go ahead I'm gonna take all the stickers off the box oh the front I apologize uh, let me talk to you about the front 11 inches uh, from here to here on the front that makes it extend past the base here so again so water can run off and not wick back inside also I did something unique with the hole uh, the opening for a bluebird house is supposed to be an inch and a half uh, chickadee is inch and a quarter bluebird house is supposed to be inch and a half one of the recommendations is rather than do a full inch and a half circle is to do an inch and a half by one and a quarter so that's what I've done on this box. It makes it uh, it's still as wide so the bluebird can utilize this space. Um, but it is narrow top to bottom. So it actually prevents larger birds from entering into the box. So that's kind of a neat feature about this particular box as opposed to this, this older box uh, which is the inch and a half opening. So... Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to remove the stickers and we're going to mount this up on the tree and then I'll show you some of the construction process on this. Alright, so we have mounted this box on the tree where the old bluebird house was. Uh, the reason is because bluebirds will traditionally come back to the same nesting box year after year. And so that's important that there's consistency. So I took the old house down, put this one in instead. Now, a couple things. The opening is between four and five feet above the ground. That's important. Uh, also, right here, we have a perch that is within a few feet of the box. They will perch on top of the box if necessary, but they prefer to perch beside the box. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we have woods behind us and we have an open field in front of us. So this is a perfect environment for our bluebird house. Um, we've got the ability to swing this and check this and keep this clean. So we'll be able to routinely maintain this box. After each, uh, e each time the bluebirds hatch, they will build a new nest. There is enough space in here to accommodate more than one nest. So if you forget to clean it out, it's okay. But it's appropriate to clean it. At, once the babies fledge, immediately clean the nest uh, because they will build another nest. So the old nest can get contaminated with insects and so forth. So it's appropriate to, as soon as the babies fledge, go ahead and clean that old nest out. Give them the opportunity to build a new nest. All right, well, we are hopeful uh, that we will get a nesting pair of bluebirds in this particular house and we will keep you posted.